Welcome back to the Wildflower Podcast. I'm hyped about today's guest. And because Woo. of the queen that she is, we have this whole setup for her new today. New setup. Totally new setup. But we have Miss Kashera. I can't say her name like that, but I call her Cash, Cash Money Garrett. Um, we're so excited to have her. I've known you now for how many years? Gosh, 16. Go. Do the math. 16 to 23. Oh, my gosh. Um. Oh, 16 like to 23. Six seven, years. Seven, six or seven years. Seven years. Ago. I want to say this. Yeah, it'll be seven years. Yeah. <gasps> it'll be seven years like this summer. Seven, Or like baby. this spring. Oh, I can't no. believe it. I feel like so much has changed, but then oh. so much hasn't. Yeah. It's like interesting. I feel like Cash is one of those friends that you like just pick up with wherever you left off. I hope and so. Yeah. No, I mean, <laughs> I feel that way. And she's always fun, always joyous. And she's given me so much life over the years. And I'll never forget the first time I met her when she spoke. <laughs> I was like, whoa, like I had, I, had, I had never heard, you know, I'm, in te- I'm from Texas, but like we didn't have people that spoke with such a thick accent. Yeah. That Band extend. She's from, you said she's Band from Ken- She's from Kentucky. Kentucky. Yeah. What part of Kentucky are you from? Eastern Kentucky. Eastern so, Kentucky. Um, a small town called Irvine. If you, it's spelt just like Irvine, California. Irvine. Oh um, yeah. We do not pronounce it that way. Irvine. <laughs> Irvine. Irvine, Irvine California. No, but for real. So a little backstory. I met Kashera through Bar Method, which is really hilarious because here we are sitting nearly seven years later, and neither one of us would ever have said probably that I would own Bar Method South Lake. Lord no. Lord no. Right. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy what God's done over the past seven years. But that's where we originally met was through Nicole Bolcher, Bar Method South Lake opened and she was like, have you met Kashera? I was like, no, but I know who she was because we're also DCC sisters, Dallas Cowboys cheerleader sisters. Everyone thinks we cheered together. We did not. I'm an old star. She's a newer star, but we're similar in age. I'm only a few years older than you, a couple years, I think. Um, But she did it out of college. I did it in out of high school so we did it in like kind of two different seasons of life but I'll never forget the first time I saw her I thought she was absolutely adorable and we didn't know what we were getting ourselves into with this training you guys her and I are like the least likely (laughs) which is so funny bar method training bar method training yeah in 16 we went it was like I think a full week in Plano yeah and like I said, the first time I heard her speak was band extend. And I said, <laughs> so that, I so like her. Those of you who don't know, like whenever you're doing <laughs> bar method, you move your leg like small little movement. So like bend, extend. Yeah. yeah. Or like if you're like in thigh work where you lift your heels up and you bend down an inch and up an inch. Like she, I think band. that's what you were doing. I think she was doing thigh work and she's like band extend. And I looked over and was like, this girl <laughs> is going to be my new favorite. And I feel like we really bonded throughout that experience. And obviously we had the deeper roots with dance and DCC, mm-hmm. but, uh, I'm so happy that I met her. And it's funny, we say unlikely because her and I both are strong personality types. We love fitness and we love working out. But in terms of being tamed, I wouldn't say that we were the best candidates for the structure of bar method. We ended up falling in love with it um, because we like to work out. But I feel like we brought a really cool flair that just set it on fire you made it a little trendier I mean it was just funny I remember people met me they're like you teach bar method (laughs) you're just so you're so all over the place like you're just too hype you know to be like structured and it was it was stressful it was and then I met Amanda I met you at cryo yeah and I don't know when that was but I was working same time well no I bet it was before you might. Did you I meet know. Amanda before? Yeah, well, yeah. So. It was, oh, no, okay, no. okay, okay. <laughs> I thought we had a longer history. Yeah, but you're not even married yet. No, I wasn't married, and I'm. Oh, then I yeah, was, for sure. Yeah, mm-hmm. and yeah. you weren't married yet. That would have been no. over nine years ago. Yeah. I think she had, or you were either. I was like engaged, or engaged, no, eight and a half. Just and married. you, I remember come. You came in yeah. and like, yeah, I would like freeze you guys. Yes. Um, because like the DC y'all Lacey, had like a deal or she whatever. She worked there for a while. She worked I there think. after yeah. me. But, um, yeah, you're always just so fun. Like, I, it's funny because, like, I don't feel like, you know, on a deep level, it's like we don't know each other that well. But every time I'm around you, I just feel like we're, like, buddies. Yeah. Like, I'm like, yeah. you just, like, it's so fun. Cash has the like ability to so make. so easy to talk to. So easy to talk to. So, so inclusive. Fun. So fun. I mean, we just laughed all the time. And actually, I miss those days. It reminds me of, like, back in the good old days, too, with, like, I say good old days, but, like, less um, we're less stress. In the good old days. You know, we're in the good old days now. It's just a different type of good old days. But, you know, back when I, I feel like I was footloose and fran- fancy free, no responsibilities but myself, so it was yeah. easier. But even then, when Taya was young, I mean, she's just so fun. Like, you know you're going to laugh, and you know you're going to feel good when you leave. And it's almost like you're we're one of those right. people that run run away from not feeling good. So I think that's part of the the, the party with it cash is, oh, you know party. It, it is, is a, party. a party so y'all should be excited because y'all are going to leave this conversation being like so filled up and like that was so fun 
and yeah, you know, and just feeling connected to you. It. So tell us a little bit about too many friends. Never. So you want people to feel like your friends all the time. I love that because people. I would say that people say that about you. Oh, I feel like I feel like I know you. I feel like I'm a friend, and I think that's so important because there's so many women out there that don't feel connected to people like that and it's just or they feel or they it's hard not everyone is inclusive so yeah. I feel like you do well, a really good job different. of like pulling people in because not everybody right. has that kind of outgoing personality but you draw those people that are isolating themselves in and that's so important and you're and real like I feel uh, like yeah. women can naturally be pretentious <laughs> or yeah, can no, be like whatever but it's like you have no like there's no walls there you're like you're just immediately just so like you know Open. I promise you so guys, it's, it's not the new neon behind me. I'm genuinely blushing. I'm like, oh, God, it's, not the, <laughs> it's the pink, the blonde. <laughs> yeah, I'm blushing. Uh, so sweet. Wow. Well, let it. I want you to talk a little bit about. Tell us, like, about your your story, your background. You've already told us you grew up in Kentucky, but give us a little high level of how you got to Texas, Fort Worth, Texas, oh and where we are currently. Oh, it has been a roller coaster. Um, yeah, I grew up in Irvine, Kentucky. Um, my whole family still lives there. So mm -hmm. I'm the only one in Texas transplant, um, but they will agree. <laughs> they will agree with me. Like this is home now for mm -hmm. me. I, I fully claim You're myself Texan. as a Texan yeah. now. Um, but yeah, so I grew up there, went to high school there. My whole family lives there. We all live on the same road. Mm -hmm. So like for me to leave was a huge deal. I went to mm -hmm. college um, at Eastern Kentucky University about 30, 45 minutes from And you were a cheerleader, house. correct? I did the dance team. I did dance team. team. Oh, the palm team. Okay. Yeah. So we um, we did football and basketball, and we did um, we competed at UDA Nationals. Mm. So that was like my highlight. I mm -hmm. lived for that like competitive, you know, on the floor, you know, you prep all year for that one moment thing. Um, and so after I did that, I did an internship at a physical therapy um, clinic in Louisville, and mm -hmm. I was like, not for me. Um, I thought I was going to, you know, you go into something with an idea of what it's going to be and then you get a strong slap in the face that that's not it usually. So I moved back home. My mom's like, why don't you just try? Have you ever thought about doing DCC? And I was like, well, no. I mean, we watched the show. Was your major anatomy? Uh, no, it was physical education. Okay, I couldn't remember. Yeah. I knew it was something to do with the body like that. Yeah, so that's kind of how I at least like bar method sort of made sense to mm -hmm. me because I was like, oh, yeah. Well, you know, the the, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got it. All the, all Anatomy. The, all the body parts. Mm -hmm. um, so then I, I was like, you know, mom, I don't know, like, maybe let's just go, like, she's like, let's just go take a prep class and see. So, she went with you, didn't she? Awesome. We drove. My mom was I like loved that the show. Like, yeah. You oh. said you watched the show. That's oh how you like thought about it. Well, like she had recorded all of it. She's like, I think you need to watch it and like see. So like we'd seen like stuff with you on it mm -hmm. and um, which is crazy to like look back and think of now, like sitting in my living room in mm -hmm. Irvine, like watching this thing, like, I think I'm going to do that one day. Like it was wild. So we drove 15 hours wow. um, to get here. I took a prep class and I was like, I'm doing this. Like, I knew immediately. I was like, I'm going to do this. You had really long blonde hair at that point. And it was like, real. It was, it was real, right? It was real yeah, long, long hair. Long, long, it was blonde so hair. long. Isn't um, it crazy how your hair changes over the years? Like, my hair is just me. not what it was. I've, well, the, we, you fried it off. Yes. Well. We all do. I didn't. Some unfortunate soul that I <laughs> <laughs> did. That and I think about named. it all the time. I'm like, why did I let that happen? But um, 15 so hours. You, you grew up dancing? I grew up doing uh, competitive cheer. Okay. So my mom Same. owns. So we were in the cheer yes. club. She was a dancer. She did the dance. I did competitive cheer. And it's like my mom still does it back home. And um, I go home and like try to work with them as much as I can. But it's so fun. So fun. And like back home, we don't have professional sports. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to cheer for the University of Kentucky. Oh, that's cool. Those girls are maybe 5'2". Like they are so small. Oh, wow. Like tiny tots. And growing up, I was short. Like I was a short little thing. And then I turned like 17. So like I didn't even grow until I was almost out of high school. Wow. And it was like, zoom, and like, I think my mom kind of like saw it happening. She's like, I think she's actually going to be taller than what she needs to be. And so I started taking dance in high school. <laughs> and I started taking dance because she was like, reroute, figure something yeah, else figure out. Well, because college cheerleading is different because like every girl's like a flyer too. Yes. Cause it's like guys and you girls. You want them to be tater tots yeah like taya could be a tater tot a yeah, yeah. Cheerleader right now like, we call her taya tot taya tot see yeah <laughs> and so i started growing and getting taller mom was like well, reroute let's start doing something else so i just started taking dance in richmond um at a studio over there and then was like you know what like i'm just gonna try out like i had enough technique that i could get myself through and i continued to train through high school or through college and stuff and then i ended up coming down here and 
just gave it a shot. And I was like, my only goal is to make it through prelims. Like that was all I wanted Number to one. do. It was, I just want to go through one round. If I can do that, I have succeeded in all aspects of this audition Cause process. Cause it's intimidating too. You're kind of like, if you and get too hopeful, you don't want right. to come crashing down. Do you down. get like super nervous and like no, tryouts not, and stuff? Not really. Like I've, I've done pageants my whole life. Mm. And I felt like I was super confident in like myself and what I could bring. And that was kind of like what I went into. It, it was like, you, you have to just rem- like remain so unique. Cause like there's auditions then were different than they are now. Like they were mm-hmm. in person. There's like 500 women in there in the mm-hmm. first round. You still, you audition, your That's audition crazy. was the, the more similar measures. to mine. Yes. yes. Now it's nothing different, like that. Very different. Um, but I walked in and I can remember the line of women that are out through there. And I was like, Oh my gosh. Like I almost turned around. My mom was like, the most turned around I skipped prelims so I didn't have to deal with that I feel like the prelim thing is a bit more overwhelming than semis because you have so many people like yes. that I didn't have to do that it was scary scary and so for sure. you're like how do I stand out mm-hmm. well and I can remember like sitting <laughs> um at the top of the steps at at and like kind of back behind the chairs and mm-hmm. I just like had my head between my knees and I was just like praying I was like Lord <laughs> like let your light shine through me I want to be a beacon when I step out on that floor like you have gave me the talent mm, you so put good. this like in my heart like let me shine so bright and I'm not kidding you like I walked up there and got in line and like puffed my chest out and I was like this is it so <laughs> we, walk, we walk out and I feel like I'd had this like outer body moment and I'm standing there and you have to slate and mm-hmm. say so you your name, where you're mm-hmm. from and mm-hmm. your like school, whatever. And I opened my mouth to start talking. <laughs> they were like, probably not expecting. <laughs> every judge looks up and goes like jaw open. And I'm just like, do they not hear me? Like, am I not? <laughs> is my, is uh, this on? Is the mic on? And literally when it goes back and you watch it in the show, there's subtitles of like, so people can understand what, what I'm you're saying. saying. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I'm speaking a foreign language. You didn't, you didn't have to figure out how to stand out. Wait, you already did well, stand out. Right because there. Of I, was like, I, I love, I love that you said be a beacon of light mm-hmm. because I remember the first time I saw you, I just saw this abundant, radiant light coming from you, so and cool. I still see it when you walk in. It's because you're, it's the spirit of the Lord that that thing that you've hidden in your heart is wild and very bright. It's like almost like you know you see the angels, not they they, they like pick the, the angels oh, with yeah, the lights that yeah. are glowing yeah. from them. There is so much of that in you, well, so you. much, but you see it. And I think you. a big part of that is your heart posture, because even then it's like you weren't going out there going, I want to be DCC. I right. want to be known. I want to be this or that and make it about me. You were literally sitting there praying, God, like let your light shine. Like you're making it all you about him. You're stewarding your gifts. So making it about him, more of him, less of you. And that's like, well, that's if amazing. You don't, you're going to fall. Like I knew there was so, there was so much more room to fail than there was to succeed. And mm. if I had made it about anything other than that, that's all I was ever going to see was failure. Wow. So I was like, I have to constantly go out and remind myself. I mean, even like four years down the road, like after cheering for that many times and doing it over and over, like every time we'd be in that tunnel, I'd be like, God, just like let your light shine through me. Like I've got to like somehow, you know, keep, cause once you make the team, you have to stay on the team, which mm-hmm. like Ashton, you mm-hmm. get. And I mean, in general, it's like, that's the hardest part. So once you got it, like that's how, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's I'm easier. Like, it's harder to lose it. Yes. I almost like when you, when you try out like that and you go for it, you got nothing to lose at that point besides, mm-hmm. okay, cool. You don't make it. Right. But when you make it and you actually get a taste of what's going on and how much you do actually enjoy being around the women and dancing and yes, you have so much more to lose or it feels like you have so much more to lose. Well, so therefore got a life built down here now. So like for me, mm-hmm. I had packed up everything and moved here. Yeah. I slept on an air mattress for two months just to try and make the team. And then where did you stay again? I slept with like a family friend up in Hazlitt so like North okay West Fort yeah, yeah we were in Irving at the time at Valley Ranch mm-hmm. and so I was making that drive um and then once I like made the team I was like okay I'm just gonna do a year and I want to go home like I miss my family mm. um and then like obviously like fat like fast forward years down the road I'm like still here I'm like, seven I'm, well no how many years eight years now, eight years yeah. now you've been in Texas rooted here. people love Texas. planted Texas and rooted awesome. well, and that's the thing like I've made I love my college, like my sorority sisters and my dance team friends there and my high school. I mean, I still have some friends that I made, you know, or have back in Irvin and most of them have moved now. But um, like the people that I've met here, I'm like, that is such a, like God has put people in my life here and that to support a life to build in Texas. I'm like, 
I was meant I was meant to be in Texas. Like, <laughs> I know. It. I know. You're like it. I. I'm right where I need yeah. to be. Well, so okay. So you talked about you know letting your light shine. How did you continue to let your light shine brightly for the Lord once you were actually immersed in the culture of the Dallas Cowboys? Because you know you and me both have a unique <laughs> perspective on that, and so you did it for four years. Mm-hmm. How did you keep, how did you, I mean, obviously you probably had ebbs and flows because it's, you know, a season of your life, but how did you keep your light shining for the Lord in the midst of what I would call darkness? <laughs> I mean, there's, po- there's positives and I don't mean dark necessarily in a negative way. A you're just, thing. it's not a bad thing. It's like, you know, you're Worldly. in the world, you're, yeah. you're in the world. And the thing yeah. is, is you're in this bubble and people don't realize you're, you're combating a lot of different things, right? Cause yeah. it says the Bible says you don't war against flesh and blood right. but you're in one of the most worldly organizations out there right you know and how did you how did you battle that how did you come you know how did you keep that light burning for the lord dude it was hard um because there were times so throughout my career as a dcc my first year um i was i mean they talked from everything about my weight like mm-hmm. that was you know they don't do so much of that anymore you just can't um but you shouldn't have been probably either but you know as a professional performer you are held to like a you know, yeah it's you're an athlete right and so they called me out on my weight and um that was kind of like took that one on the chin i was like you know what like i got this like these are things i can control so mm-hmm. i didn't take that one too seriously um i know at the end of the day i still had good friends good family like i was a good person so like yeah. that didn't bother me um so i took that one um my second year i struggled with like not necessarily like validation but just like mm. okay like where do i stand here like how am do i, I seen yeah. yes and so that can be an issue in itself mm. because that can really make or break somebody especially a performer um because that confidence and and feeling seen mm-hmm. you strive for that mm-hmm. yeah your whole goal is to make an, an impression mm-hmm. um and then my third year my dad was diagnosed with cancer mm-hmm. wow. and I so i was like should I re-audition and everything? And then my fourth year was... But that third year... My third my year p- popped off. So from my, perf- <laughs> my perspective, so I have had a, I've had a like, you know, an outsider perspective and insider perspective here. But, you know, what's crazy about you moving into that third year amidst the adversity that, you know, amongst the adversity that you were experiencing from a personal level, the, when you moved into this new season, it was almost like the Lord was exalting your yes you know, because oh, you went from, I feel like not really being noticed or appreciated for a lot of the talent that you had inside of you to, I mean, I even like attribute it to, I got to work with you one-on-one right. and I was like, she's got so much more than what they've seen exactly. and maybe than what she actually sees inside of her from a dance perspective. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously from, you know, the hip hop vibe you had, yeah. the cheer background, the power, you're a power performer, mm-hmm. but from a standpoint of like going, no, she's got some unique ability to like take this and make it her own and it's wonderful and I mean I was impressed by that when I saw you I was like I don't think she knows that she's got this and so you went off from what I remember at that audition process process to really like kind of go back to your other question about how to like find and stay in the light through any kind of dark it was the people that God had put in my life Mm -hmm. and I you know I kind of contribute that to especially like our relationship and meeting you like in the right moment um so yeah when my dad was diagnosed I was like that's it I'm done I want to move home um you know at least take care of and help my parents you know because they're both self-employed they're both on their own businesses and and it was really hard for my mom to be a caretaker um and he was like no you're gonna stay down there you're gonna do this whatever and that's what you're you know it'll help he's like it'll help me like knowing that you're down there doing what you need to do and it helps whatever yeah um Anyways, him to be excited, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, to, like, yeah to look forward to, to like, be proud of yeah. too, and um, and that was that same kind of season where I got to work with you, mm-hmm. and so my first years I was like, what do they think of Cash? Like, how do they think that I'm this big performer or whatever? So I had built kind of solos around what I thought they would enjoy, and then going into that third year, my perspective changed because my priorities were different. Mm-hmm. It wasn't so much about me anymore. It's like, oh, like I've got my family has sacrificed mm-hmm. so much for me to be here. I've got you know one more chance to really really push this um and it was really the people that were put in my life that kind of like encouraged me to kind so of she did harder. your solo for that third yes third audition yeah okay and until then <clears throat> no one had really like I don't feel like spoke life into other than my parents and you know yeah whatever my close friends that were encouraging me and that was like no you can do this like you are better than this until I worked with you and Ash was like 
Like she just spoke so honestly and so truthfully to me. And I was like, whoa. Yeah. Wow. Well, I, I knew can. I I knew I had found <laughs> another wild one in her because, you know, what the, I the, I think that's why we were always drawn together and why we worked so well together because, you know, I've done hundreds of solos and I can't say I'm connected to all of them. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I mean, yeah. and not any, you know, some there's some spirits you work with, some people you work with and you're like, whoa, yeah. this is like, yeah. this Different. is how it is. I mean, I could yeah. have given the same solo to someone else and it would have been it would not have worked, you know? And so it's like, I remember feeling so much like you and I have the same bold authenticity, uh, wild, like traits that I really right. connected to. And I saw them in a different way. I didn't feel that when I first met you. Yeah. And even in the environment of bar method, we were friends and we laughed and whatever, but it was almost like our souls connected on a deeper level of like, mm -hmm. no, we're bold, authentic. And I have some of your personality traits. Yeah. My other, I have some yeah. domineering traits that aren't like yours, but like I have a lot of that fun, mm -hmm. free. And I felt you were like so free yeah. to me. I get so hyped. And you know, obviously one of our favorite scriptures is where the spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. Right. And I felt that you're that person of, and in a, when you're in an environment that cultivates that freedom in you, yeah. you just, <laughs> you just fly. And so right? I loved it. I mean, and it did, it, it changed everything. And I was like that, you you working with you and just like literally finding a a community that like really like supported that just like just get after it mentality I was like man I mean and it changed everything from that time I literally stepped into so many opportunities at DC I became a group leader I got a Barbie that year for that solo the Barbies uh, uh, the Barbies <laughs> they're little like, <laughs> she goes what's a Barbie what's I need to show you they literally look like you actually <laughs> mm -hmm. um they're like little they've got like all like different like solo Barbies color yeah but it's in a little DCC uniform Cute. and they've got the boots and palms in their hands Aww. and it's like a huge honor to get one mm -hmm. what do you get um, that for your solo solo oh okay. like if it's a standout solo oh. and I hadn't gotten one my first or second year and then that third year I came in and literally like everyone was like whoa it's just, like no one expected it and what's funny about it too it was like I hadn't really like shown a lot of people mm -hmm. and so I like just walk in I'm like dee, 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 here we are and all of a sudden the music came on and it was like feedback Janet yeah. Jackson because mm -hmm. sexy and you know wow. people had told me don't do that song it's overused and stuff and I was like no I'm doing it I think it's, it's cool. It. I think it's, it's overused cool unless you walk out like her and you. So I told her, I was like, if you're a standout, yeah, no matter what you dance to, right, right, you change that song. Well, also, so you go for I think it. it's cool because you said that she was able to call out, like, see things in you and call 100%. it out, and and because like sometimes in our like when we're looking at our view of ourselves, like we can't right. see things, we're blinded to who to certain things, right? So it's cool to have someone who is like also seeking the Lord is after the father's heart that goes, no, I see this in right. you. I'm going to call this out in you and, and you can do this. And she's encouraging those things in you, but also incorporating that into dance yeah. and how you went about your solo and what it all was like. That's so cool. And such a unique And you know scenario. what was crazy about it? It's so easy, especially, and I keep relating it to the dance world just because that's what I'm familiar with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's so easy to take a critique and let it eat you alive. Mm -hmm. And I feel like a lot of people take DCC that way mm -hmm. instead of looking at it. And it, but a lot of times it's where the, who and where does the critique come from? And anytime Ashen has ever, like even with Bar Method or dance, you know, with that solo or even anything in life now that I've <laughs> life stuff, her, yeah. life stuff now, she can give me a critique and it's not, I'm not like, oh, you have to be open to receiving that. And mm -hmm. it helps whenever it's coming from someone that does walk in their faith and mm -hmm. that has had life experience that you can like relate to. But I feel like, you know, we close ourselves off to receiving anymore. Yeah. Well, because and it's being, not a negative thing, like no. constructive criticism. I think when you're, when you're in the environment we were in, when you constantly get feedback, it can honestly shut you off to understanding the difference between constructive and just tearing down. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we experienced a lot of that in Cowboys. And so for me, I noticed that my response to people criticizing me wasn't as good as it was. I didn't feel as teachable yeah. anymore. It's almost like you harden your heart to it because all you are in that environment, you're just told what's not yeah. right. right. And, you know, I realized that was part of the That was the nature of the game. We were in this professional yeah. environment. And that was just kind of what I signed up for. But I noticed outside of it, like I wasn't receiving yeah. From, I wasn't really receiving critiques anymore well. It was almost mm -hmm. like I channeled it all as a negative thing. And I didn't in, not necessarily want to improve. I was, like, tired of all of the critiques. I was like, I just want to be just seen. Be. Yeah. I just want, Or I just want to be B. I yeah. don't even want to be yeah. critiqued, you know? And so I think that's what kind of, like, we had that mm -hmm. feeling with bar method, yeah. you know? And it's like, even when I was outside of Cowboys, I was so young, 19, 20, 21, 22, You're baby. Yeah. So I felt like when I was out of it, like, if I can give – 
if I, if I were, if I were in my shoes, what would have been helpful to me? Yeah. Like, how could I help these women that are in it right now yes. understand their identity, their value? Because I didn't understand those things. I was so young yeah. and I was shaped by the culture so much that, I mean, I was still a light and I still pursued the Lord, but I didn't have people telling me my identity was rooted in the Lord, you know? And yeah. so coming out of Cowboys, you had a lot of, you know, that was a, I mean, what I loved about watching you is that people flooded towards you because you were that light and you genuinely encourage and love on people. And that was so cool because women need that in that environment. And yeah. you're genuine about it. It's not like, oh, I hope you do well. Like you wanted people to do right. well. <laughs> you know? It's funny you say that. <laughs> because sometimes it's not authentic. Like, yeah, like <laughs> I mean, no, I mean, and I don't believe I it. That's I don't, the worst part. <laughs> I, don't, I don't believe like anyone really yeah. in that environment when you're da no, dancing with don't. your friends feel that way. I don't believe they that. Don't. Now, do I believe that that spirit of competition is ignited mm -hmm. and, and there can be battles of jealousy? Yeah, I think it's, it's a naturally exist it, among women. And then you put, you you go put into that this on top of it where everyone... Like you're that's a, for a lot yeah, of, you're competing. And then that's like a lot of these girls like life dream, like their dream. And I remember talking to cash about identity and like knowing that when I stepped out of that organization, I didn't, I thought I was fine. Cause I'm strong. You're yeah. strong. Mm -hmm. I really was. I didn't struggle. Like some of the women immersed in it with like, I was never a crumbler. I always just yeah. dealt with it and I kept powering through. But then when I was on the outside of it, and now that you're on the outside of it, you're probably experiencing some of those things yeah. that I was talking to her about before, like, you know, the identity issues, like what is that rooted in? Like, so how have you felt transitioning from such a huge, huge season of your life? Cause you were there way longer than I was. So their roots were a little bit deeper, but how has it been transitioning from really understanding, okay, Lord, who am I? This was such a big part of my life and it still is, but you know, I'm so much further removed now that there's been a process of that. Right. But I do remember being done with Cowboys and not knowing who I was in the Lord and really being challenged to go, okay, God, who is Ashton without mm -hmm. any labels attached I was to say, her? It's such a big title to be former D DCC. Dancing and, and people, dancing. And everyone like associates, oh, she was a Dallas Cowboys shooter. Yes. She was, or know, she's a dancer. Yeah. She's competed her whole yeah. life. And so for me, it was DCC was such a huge thing. Yes. But it, more so just the identity I found in dance mm -hmm. and my passion and love for performing. I was mm -hmm. all of a sudden not performing ever again, yeah. you know, and I was channeling my um, efforts into people. Like I was just talking about, okay, how do I, how do I shift this Lord to where I can still have this fire and this love, but give it to others right. and watch them fly. Yeah. You know, there's still people that sit in it. They're like, Oh, I'm, you know, I could still do that. And I'm like, no, I can't. My season's done. <laughs> My season's done. But now how can I, how can I help her just be on fire for the Lord? Like love what she's doing. And so for you talk a little bit about that transition, like the struggles that might've been a part of that, where you are, if you're still walking through it. I mean, I yeah. think that's so, I, 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 I think that that's, I think still. that's still so helpful because even when we're in the midst of like, our pain or like the process of transition, which there's seasons like that. Mm -hmm. How are you navigating that? How are you moving forward? Because I do, I can relate and it makes me emotional because I can relate to the feeling of that. Yeah. So it's mm -hmm. so real. You're like, where do I fit in God? It's like, who am I? Off. It's like, it's like, you know, when Halloween's over or something and it's just like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was a G.I. Joe last night, but uh, today I'm just back to me. I'm like, all right. Like, what do you G.I. Jane. Yeah, G.I. Jane. Wonder Shane Woman. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, it's a, a joke, but um, I feel like throughout my process as a DCC, I, I never just wanted to be, because we like, we'll say this when we introduce ourselves, like, I'm DCC Cash. DCC or Cash. Like, yeah, Shara. like, DCC whoever. Like, we say that before our names. So huh. then we would like, you almost like and that shifted that it with you we didn't have so I didn't have Instagram and all the things that you yes. were immersed in with the times like social media Instagram and Facebook it wasn't a thing it was the year I was leaving we had Twitters that they were starting oh to give gosh, us that Twitters. was the year I, I left so yeah the DCC why, title why yeah. would you say it that way I mean I, they know you're you're standing there in a uniform right right when you're well, saying this so like, when I got to my fourth year I like incur I started to encourage the girls if we were in uniform mm -hmm. and we're doing like a little social media post or a video um maybe let's just say your name like yeah. hey because it's obvious you're in the uniform right, like you're, we don't ever we know you're a dcc yes <laughs> like we get it um <laughs> so i feel like my my time on the team like i tried to remind myself like this is who you are this is something that you get to do mm -hmm. so like mm -hmm. i would try to like separate like this is you as a person <laughs> this is something you get to do how do you get to make the best of both um it was funny you kind of talked about to the way like we would treat each other on the squad and stuff like yeah there is that natural sense of um competitiveness that's just going to come from the environment but um 
you can really rally around the people around you. And if you, I don't mean to say use them in the right way, but if you can relate to them in the right way, it you do kind of use each other to work your way up. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that doesn't like sound right. I think like what you're, you're trying to people. say is you stay <laughs> is you're staying in your lane when you're able to appreciate women for what that. they what they give. Exactly. So you think about it, there's four group leaders, right? You're not all the same. Right. You don't have the same talents. Yes. You don't have the same giftings. And I think exactly. breaking out in that environment yeah is challenging sometimes because they kind of label you the moment you walk in. And unless you do something spectacular, kind of like, you you know, I remember I never spoke, you know, until my third year. And they're like, you can speak. And I'm like, "Uh uh-huh. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, I'm very yeah. well spoken. Yeah, you know, they didn't let you. Or, well, it's like, just that they don't. They don't your know. You know, there's some people right. that like that's like really what they do. Like you know, they're going the interview girls. They're the interview uh, girls. They, they kind of like put you in these categories. Like I was like the dancer. Okay. Like you yes. know, you dance the and like the te- you know things like that. Highlighted. But then getting to really see what you know, there's multi things mm-hmm. that people can do. And you know, so I remember feeling like okay, now they know that I can I can speak too. You know, and I mean, but they do that. But it's like what you're trying to say is that. If when you under start to go, okay, Lord, I know who I am. I know, and yeah, it's a competitive environment, but she's good at that. I'm going to let yes. her be good at that. Yeah. And I'm going to let her fly and not try to be her. Right. But the reality is not everybody feels that way on the team. I think some people really do struggle. But it, yes. but when you're able to identify that, it gives you more peace. It does. Mm. And so, like, I knew, like, from the start, like, I was just like, I'm just going to be the, like, sisterhood. Like, I was the one mm-hmm. that was trying to, like, plan outside stuff yeah. and, and that kind of stuff. And it's like, if I can just, like, rally around our personalities and, and I keep true – like to the locker room being the most important part, like I, that'll help me stay sane. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, honestly, it was a little bit selfish. I was like, okay, like this is for me, guys. I need friends. But um, <laughs> <laughs> it was true. I need friends. I help. Did. I did. You're, need you're friends. like a seven, I think. She is. I you're am. a seven. Oh, that's what she sure. is. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a yeah. seven wing eight. Okay. Gotcha. Eight. Eight. I'm an eight wing you're seven. Eight. seven. Yep. So yeah. That's why we kind of like bounce off. <laughs> but um, wait, what are you? I'm a three. Really? Yeah. Oh, I guess I could see that. Yeah. What's your? Do you know your wing? I kind of get confused. I go back and forth. I think I'm I'm a th- I think I'm a three wing four, but sometimes okay. I read different things and I'm like I don't know. See, sometimes I go back and forth. I'm like I could I could be a two. Yeah, sometimes. I know I'm a three, but I'm not sure on the wing. I get a little confused on that. I was like I never like really like bought much into the enneagram thing, and then I was like man, because I don't like to be put in a box. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm like, don't you like title me? You know, and then people. My husband's a seven. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, so, but that's, that's, so that's, that's a good one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, oh yeah. Um, okay, but so. back to that kind of like <laughs> how I kept my identity there. Honestly, I struggled more with my identity once I was done cheering than I did while I was a cheerleader. Mm-hmm. Which I feel like that's sometimes that's kind of opposite for things. But ooh. there goes my phone, guys. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Just grab it. <laughs> we're ca- we're casual here. There we go. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I asked chair. at the beginning. Just side note. I said, <laughs> "Is everyone's phones on silent?" And then all of a sudden, we're like a few minutes in. Ding, and she looks at me. I swear, you know what it it's is? Okay. It's the You're Holy Spirit. Trouble. Like, or it's like <laughs> these things like triggering her. You know, I'm, I'm like the greatest trigger for people that are so <laughs> strong. You don't trigger me. I, like I know you. I don't. You're, you're usually, <laughs> she's, she gets me now. Her and Tyler are just like, we, we're, she is who she is. <laughs> <laughs> no need to lose sleep. But I think it's super interesting that you talk about when you were out of it. Cause I even remember speaking to you when you're in it. And I was like, she's good. You know, I, but, but yeah. then moving, I knew that. Moving out of it was hard. So I got hired full time right mm-hmm. after. So I really didn't even get any downtime out by of it. The the Dallas, Cowboys. By the Cowboys. Yeah. Um, so I retired in May of 2019. And the thing was, too, when I retired, I didn't retire from an injury. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like I was – I could have done it for another year. But after you'd been there for a while – Four and years. You get to do kind of – it. once you get to do so much, there's – not that there's nothing left. I mean – and It's just time-consuming. And you're is, like, do I want to – like, you want other people to get the opportunity. Mm -hmm. Not that I felt like I could have it over them. I really didn't think that way. It was just like, just from the seniority of it. Like there was, you know, there was things that you got to do the longer you stuck around. And Mm -hmm. and that's just kind of how it was. But I'd gotten to do so much in that third year. Mm -hmm. I went to Pro Bowl, which was like something like unheard of, you know? And I was like, Oh, I guess I'll come back and do a fourth. Um, But after I got done, I got hired. So I was working full time. So I never actually got to step away, Mm -hmm. which I think kind of was at my detriment a little bit. Um, I learned a lot about myself. I learned a lot about, um, you know, the industry, game day, production. I really learned a lot. Um, but I was still in it. Mm-hmm. But now my friends were gone. Mm-hmm. I didn't get to do any of the other stuff. I was behind the scenes. Um, and so it was familiar for me to want to like lean into the, like the girls on the squad and the game day stuff. But I was like, oh, but I'm not. 
the familiar. And so then I would pull back. Now, this is when I really started to notice my, um, not my self-confidence, but my identity kind of shift. I've never been one to shy away from my personality. I'm loud. I know it. I'm yeah. going to be that huge, loud laugh. And it's just like belching, like, ha, ha, ha. It's actually You're going like, to be the light. If yeah. it's going to, like, if you could spell out ha, 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 that's my laugh. It's like, ha, ha. Like, it's yeah. ha, ha, ha. The belly laugh. It, it is yeah. ha, ha, ha. Um, but I would, because I didn't want to, now I've got girls that have moved into that group leader position. But, I mean, you get it. If Ashton ever came back and taught, I fell into, yes, ma'am. I wasn't, I wasn't, you know, um, for example, my group leader was JC Scott. Mm. If JC came back, that's my group leader. So now she calls the shots. I listen to her. Like you just, it's <laughs> yeah. funny, like who you're around, you fall into. Like Nicole was the same way. Mm-hmm. I looked up to Nicole. She was an all-star. She was one of my really close mentors that got me through my first, second, third year. And, um, when, if she was ever in the space, like, yes, ma'am. Look, what do you need? Like eyes are on her. So I was trying to like pull back and let them have that moment mm. because I'd already had it. Mm. So I was like trying to remove myself a little bit. Well, now I'm not going to be the funny one in the room. I'm not, I'm trying to sit and learn my space and, and figure out. And I was in this weird like limbo because mm-hmm. was I on staff? Yes, technically, but I had cheered with those girls the year prior. And so then I didn't know how to direct. And so I was trying to learn this new like area. Um, and then COVID happened, which was weird in itself. Mm-hmm. Um, and in that space, and then I'm still in it. I'm still doing the same things. I'm still working with the squad. Now, anyone that I cheered with is almost gone. Mm-hmm. There's maybe like three girls left, and I'm still there. So it's like, am I just hanging on? Yeah. And I had talked to Ashton about this. I'm like, I feel like I'm clutching on to something so tightly, afraid to let it go. But I feel like God's pulling me because I, I felt fulfilled and I loved it. Mm-hmm. But there was something just yanking at me constantly. And I'm like, why do I feel confused? And I talked to Ashton about it and she's like, that is God's way of telling you. Like, because the confusion really does, that stirs you, that stirs you from the inside out. Mm-hmm. And well, you know, like I love the scripture. It says God is not the author of confusion. And it's like when you, that's what we you, talked about any time that there's that confusion, you know, that. Yes. That's not God yes. or that not. pool or that pool, like, you yes. know, to, to, to move forward, but not knowing how or not knowing what to, and a lot of it, we're holding on to the former things, Yes, you know, and God's called us to like, you know, not be conformed to this right. world, but you know, and also just, I felt like it's like the Lord was just so going, Hey, like I have a new thing for 100%. you. So I was going to say, I feel like 100%. every, every uh-huh. season that we walk into and that he closes doors, he's always prepared. Yes. He's not going to just like leave you high and dry right. he's he's already prepped something mm-hmm. for the next season as he's closing yes. the door of the former thing a hundred percent and I was holding on and I would like call and I would be so upset and it was like why do I love this but I feel so torn mm-hmm. I'm like I love my job like I didn't have a problem waking up driving I was driving an hour to Frisco every day just mm-hmm. to make it work and um but I still felt lost as like who I was I'm mm. like and I had changed my personality like in the room like I used to be someone that would I was never afraid to speak up and give my idea mm. or my opinion mm-hmm. whether it was going to be received well or not like mm-hmm. and I felt like my honesty was one of the reasons why they hired me in the first place mm-hmm. and so yeah. I feel like a lot of the traits that caused them to think like oh she would be great on staff I'd lost mm. so then I was like oh, I've never been that person in my life who am I yeah and I stepped away you had to ask like, the lord yeah, who am i i, I did right and and, and, <laughs> and, that, and i was like you know what like i have to let go for uh-huh. him to be able to pull something new into my life right. and so i finally just like made the decision to step away from it after eight years wow. almost and Wild. really it it opened up my heart to just knowing who i am in God so deeply that's like so when there's nothing attached to nothing. it I mean that's the thing is that nothing. we do, even the those of us that are like more wild and bold and honest like you're talking yes. about when you're in an environment that you get to that you're you find success in that you find comfort in because yes. you're like okay now I wouldn't say mastery because we've never mastered anything but when you get to a, in an environment where you're like no I've got to do this I've got to do this I'm kind of climbing up this hierarchy and I know that I'm gifted and talented you start to rely on those gifts and those talents as dictating what you're capable of instead of going no God you say now I understand what it means like your strength is made perfect in my weakness now I actually get it because I feel like in that when you're younger like that too in an environment like that whether we want to lean on our own strength or not we tend to like rely on our giftings and that's why you're there in the first place because of your giftings and you're operating in the talents God gave you you're stewarding them it reminds me of the parable of the talents which God would show you find favor in those stewarding them God appreciates that but when you're when you're pulled back going I'm gonna 
go into a new thing, nothing's attached to your name anymore. Yeah. It's just Kishera. It it's just Ashton. It's just Amanda. Whoever mm-hmm. it is, there's. It's almost. It really pierces your soul oh, because you're, yeah. you realize that you are nothing. Because I think apart it's human from the Lord to yeah to want to be like. I, I I think well my personality being a three you know there there can be elements of wanting to be known or mm-hmm. whatever and it's like and and I don't know if you've ever like sevens felt have that, a little more of that know, not as strong though yeah and so it's like when you strip it all away like you're saying of just like who you are in Christ like God doesn't care like not what your all. titles are or what, who you're not who, in Christ I think sometimes when you're yeah, alone it, like that you're yeah. you're really awake you're awakened to the fact that whoa, God, I've been doing this on my own. You actually haven't been leading me. I thought you were leading Mm -hmm. me, but it was Ashton leading me. (laughs) And there's there's, there's been so many moments in my life of things like that that I've really held on to, dreams and things like that that have been really hard for me to lay down because you go, I think I trust you, God, but do I really? Like, because then you got to put your money where your mouth is kind of thing of like, okay, I am going to fully surrender this. Now, what happens if you don't resurrect it? What happens if I lay this dream down and I bury it and I let it die? And that's the end of that. God, then you have to like, I had to just get to a place where I was like, well, then whatever it is, like, I know it's going to be good. But that was a long process for me. Like, did you kind of go through that process a little of like, of like, uh, I'm telling my brain I'm laying this down, but like, how do I believe it I in my heart? I grieved this That's, process. Yeah. Like, I felt like, I felt like it was like a breakup. And weren't you surprised by it? Because I think you were surprised by I it. I was 100%. It caught me off guard. Um, <laughs> I love how you say that smiling. You're like, it caught me off it guard. I, I, I say that because I, I felt that on you. I felt that, you know, because you're strong, like, it was a shock to you to go, I didn't know I could feel this way, and I don't want to even give it that much credit. Because I know you also have that kind of personality, yeah. which is, like, kind of like, like me. Rebel- I have a little bit of that in me where it's like, whoa, where did I miss it? Like, why did I give them this much power? Who am I? Uh-huh. Right? Yes. Yeah, I, I know that's how you're feeling. And that's or what I, I had to, like, remind myself, like, who's the authority in your life? <laughs> is it them? Is it you? Or is it going to be the Lord? Like, you've got to make that decision. Yeah. And when you do make that decision, like, every, your other decisions follow. So it was like, figure out where your authority lies and then follow through with that. And I had mm-hmm. gave, I had gave so much of the authority in my life to a job, um, an organization that brought, I hate to say it, but clout. And yeah. I was like, Ooh, Nelly. It's, 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 hum- it's, it's humbling. It's, it's like when it says the word of God, it talks about it is alive and powerful. My favorite scripture, I always talk about this, but it's because mm-hmm. it exposes your, it exposes you. It cuts between mm-hmm. your soul, the bone and the marrow, mm-hmm. the joint, like it, literally the word of God pierces you. And so what's humbling about it is you're going, Lord, I didn't even know I operated with clout or I didn't know if I, I operated with arrogance or if I, I mean, I'm, there were some things that yes. I came out of it and I was like, well, mm-hmm. I, I mean, and th- that's the beauty of it is that when you're able to assess yourself and when you're able to go, whoa, Lord, like these are the things that like, cause I always pray, Lord, expose me, mm-hmm. expose my heart, you know, search me, oh God, and know my heart mm-hmm. because find an offensive away in me. Cause the reality is, is when you're humble enough to go that there is a, we're sinful people yeah. and there is a fence in us that we're sometimes we're, we're deceived to. And in that mm-hmm. environment, because it's normal, it's natural in that environment. It feels okay. It feels acceptable in that environment. Control is everything. It's a spirit. And it is everything because mm-hmm. you think if I can control this, if I can control mm-hmm. that, can I control what they think about me, what I'm going to receive, how am I going to like that? And I was, it was, I was starting to control my relationship. It crushed mm-hmm. your authenticity. It did. Wow. Yes. It, and that's, and that's saying. like it had changed who I felt like I was coming into it. And I've never been the kind of, even like my, me and my boyfriend, like I was starting to like almost want to control that and hold tighter to it. I was clinging on to anything I could get a hold of. Wow. And I was like, what is happening? That's like, a why? spirit. And it Jezebel. was. And it's like yes. icky. You're like, I don't want to feel like this. I don't want to yeah. like, I don't, yeah. Because I've been such, I mean, we've said it all day. Like it's such like a spot, a spontaneous, like I love like random road trips and like <laughs> <laughs> big gas station snack girl. I'm like, which one am I going to get today? <laughs> like I uh, have a new favorite color, favorite <laughs> city favorite movie every week but so I've never been one to like really want to like hold tight to something and especially I love when things change I'm not a fan of routine I love something new but I was clinging on to routine mm. and I'm like what is this but it was because I didn't know I was lo- I had lost myself I had lost my identity and I but I was still in it so that's why I'm, I feel like mm-hmm. mine is a little bit unique because I still had it 
but I didn't, I was not the same person that I came into. Right. It. And I was like, quit. Yes. Like, you need to move Ashton forward. Was probably like, one of the catalysts that really, like, it's time to move on because you actually, yeah. like you were talking about before, you have to take a step forward. You have to move. Oh. You have to, like, make your way. And if you don't take a step, if you don't take action, because yes. I'm so action oriented, you're going to sit in the same spiral of yes. whatever it is you're sitting in. You know, and you might miss what you miss God it. actually yeah. has waiting for ding you. Dong. <laughs> ding dong. Ding, ding, <laughs> Yeah. I mean, just by trying to hold yes. on to the former glory of what yeah. was. That and no we think, God, we think God's going to show up sometimes if we just wait for him. And I'm, I see people say that to me all no. the time. You know, God, <sighs> God can make it happen. Yes, it but you, you have, have to do it. You got to partner. <laughs> it's the most misconstrued. It's the, um, he, the be the, still. Like that, oh, yeah, that yeah. is the most misconstrued, like after that comment <laughs> or like, first. still, I know I'm God. Yes. It's true, but you know, but you've got to meet. But somewhere. he also asks us to take a step of faith. Bingo. Mm-hmm. Lots of time. Yes. I mean, you know, so. And be still and know that I'm God. Really, I think that people use that out, out of context because a, when you're yeah. still in the Lord, a lot of that's to like calm the anxiousness, the worries. The it's rest. like to be still and know, yes, God is sovereign. Yeah. He is acting and he's working. And we don't have to make things happen, but we do partner. When he's cha- mm-hmm. when he's pushing you out to do it, when you are feeling it, yeah. you do it and you make and you make choices. Well, and I got so blinded with like the decision. I was like, but if I just stay a little bit longer, maybe, maybe I'm here just to wait it out. And I was like, nah. Nah, mm-hmm. this isn't a feeling of waiting. Mm-hmm. Like I knew from my first time in the studio, I was like, "You just ride this out, like it, you will be successful." But the longer I stayed in the actual job side of it, I was like, "Man, like I don't, mm, I don't know. Like this isn't really, is it?" But that right there should be my first red flag. Like you know. So, um, but since I've like let go of it, I feel like I've brought like so much more life back to myself. That's like amazing. I feel like I, I look like even people are like you look like you look different and I'm like yeah it's because I got the monkey off my back I'm kidding well, I, it wasn't uh, the, monkey off well, the back, Lord the was, Lord honors obedience uh, and we talk about it when you're obedient to God that's when you start to truly walk in true authority and an authority in the Lord it's like the deep roots of like continually obeying what God's yeah. leading you to do I mean then he restores like yeah. I've already f- I mean you feel so different I mean right. restoring the authenticity of like who you are and who he's called you to be because For when sure. he's called you to be someone bold you don't have to live with con- within the constraints exactly of- and it goes into religion which we talk about mm-hmm. all the time obedience produces authority and holiness you know and we think about the Lord like the more sacred you are the more you're walking with the Lord it- your life of obedience is really indicative of your walk with God. I didn't understand obedience. I didn't understand that just simple acts of like mm-hmm. stepping in faith and like doing, quitting that job <laughs> or speaking to that person simple, on the street. I was going to yeah. say simple things like that. Like people always make like obedience such a big I have to buy this house. Of like, yeah, <laughs> a big decisions. But a lot of times it's just the Holy Spirit nudging you to say, hey, go encourage that person. And sometimes in those moments we can, ar- you know, argue or wrestle with the Holy Spirit of like, oh, like, I don't, that's a stranger on the street. Like, is that going to be weird? Mm-hmm. You know, but sometimes, like you're saying, just like... Those it's the small moments, the yeah. moments that people don't see, right? Yeah. So our, who we are is a is an indicative of our secret place, our time mm-hmm. with the Lord, like how we live our lives. And I'm a big person on that because no one sees your right. quiet time right. with God. Nobody sees, you're not doing it for the affirmations mm-hmm. of men. That's you're right. like, Lord, I want to be known by you. I want to be loved by you. I want to, I want to see you, God, show me you. I want, you know, and so how, how do you battle? I mean, a lot of people talk about, okay, that cause we're in, okay. So we've been, we've been going through this. We're in battle and bloom was the word God gave for us. I, the Lord gave me battle. The Lord gave, um, Amanda bloom for the indicative podcast. Like for the, the podcast, words for the year, for, for the podcast. words for the year, which is funny and hilarious it's, because it it's so us. So, on point it was so on like, point with our personalities and even like wildflower it's so funny because you had wild and i had wild flower she had I'm flowers like, I'm the flower you're the She's, wild it's because and it's like i'm wild for bloom. jesus and not that you're not i just i'm like a bold like hey but i don't want to look like, like I'm anybody just different like yeah i'm more like and you're unique chill. you're yeah, yeah i'm unique in my <laughs> own way but like you're like radical i'm like hey so, like shave your head sell your clothes go do whatever god tells you to do right. like not everybody is like that and not well, that i want to shave my i mean whatever i've learned that it's not my choice. You look good with a buzz cut. <laughs> <laughs> but it was so crazy because <laughs> leading into this year when we were praying about it, like I was asking the Lord for a word. She was asking the Lord for a word. Mm-hmm. And I came to you first and I said, I feel like the Lord showed me bloom. And you were like, yeah, okay. <laughs> because like, I'm very much like, I, I say this every week, but I'm like, I, I love to see women bloom into who God's called them to be right. and like whatever, you know, chase their dreams, all this stuff. 
and like you're so intense and she's like I just I feel like there's something about equipping women for battle and all this stuff and so then we go back to the drawing board she's asking the Lord and the Lord clearly shows her battle mm-hmm. and like some scriptures and stuff to go with it and, and then we were sitting there one day and she goes battle and bloom like and I was like that's so cool because you can't get Have to the bloom. one without the other Dude, everyone wants to bloom everyone mm-hmm. wants to be in their calling and this whole big thing but no one wants to like do the day in and day out things that are unseen that are in the secret place that are equipping you before you can even right. bloom to where God well and you. you know we we talked about this in our first episode and the Lord showed me a Sharon flower it was pink and you know mm-hmm. I'm not I'm more of a muted color and the Lord <laughs> was just showing me about the wilderness and how Jesus is that flower mm-hmm. that you see blooming he mm-hmm. is the prize right. he is the um what we're chasing after what we're That's pursuing right. and people forget that like he's sitting in the throne room right now interceding in our behalf yeah. so the lord for this year taught me a lot about or it's teaching me teach me to pray mm-hmm. which is a great it's a battle weapon yeah, right intercession right. and that the lord literally is making intercession next to god that's he is our advocate he is yeah. standing he is the wedge between us and god the father and so you know how how do you battle do you battle what does that look like is it consistent is it not consistent like practically it's, practically yeah. it's funny you say that um i feel like i have really really in the last um more specifically in the last 6 no in the last like 3 months been in a spiritual battle mm-hmm. um where i felt very um i mean i went through i mean this was like super recent like a little splint of like really almost like in my in my feels um I don't like to say the d word so um, no you had a hard time had, I've had a hard time mm-hmm. um so in January of 2021 this is it's crazy I was um jumped in my parking garage did you um, know did you not know this about her I forgot now yes oh, I remember yeah but, oh my gosh it I was forgot. a trip so I was coming home it was January it was not late at all it was like 7 p.m I lived in uptown Dallas and um I was pulling in the parking garage. I saw these kids like walking through. I say kids. They were like, I mean, they were like teenagers, like 17, 18 years old. Um, I mm-hmm. pulled in, backed into my parking spot. My mom's on the phone. I get out of the car, Gosh. take a step out. And sure enough, like this kid comes up to me. He's like, uh, can I use your phone? I turn to look at him. And he just knocks me in the <gasps> face. Uh, I took off running like the whole thing now is like in slow motion like looking back oh I was trying to get gosh. into the door and next thing you know like I'm getting a kid in the back of the head it was like a, they were using a pop wrench just no. beating I mean literally me. I it, so I turn around and just start fighting like that's all you can do I just mm-hmm. turn around and start swinging or my mom again. is on the <laughs> phone kidding. for this reason but my oh mom my can gosh. hear the whole thing so she's listening and I'm screaming like stop like hit I mean I'm throwing punches like I have never That's incredible. Your adrenaline's like How punching. is your mom? I, I don't Dude, understand your my mom. mom. She's a beast of her own. Like that woman's tough. She's strong. She is a strong woman. Um and she anyways she like flew down the next day but they broke my finger and stole my car keys and stole my truck that I had just bought in August of the year prior. Wow. So I was like it's only like 3 or 4 months old whatever. Anyways all that happens, they didn't try to kill me because the next day the se- they wrecked my truck, mm-hmm. run away, whatever. They get out, they get uh, gone. The next day at like three in the afternoon, the same three kids carjack another lady in a parking garage in Uptown Dallas, and they shot her. <gasps> and they didn't oh have gosh. a gun with me. They, I, you know, like wow. I was, I was okay. I just had a concussion. Um, I had a busted lip and broken finger and some like torn ligaments in my hand. Um. But, like, they actually, like, she ended up living. I asked. I had to make sure. I was like, yeah. please tell me she survived. Um, she was okay. But they shot her and drug her, and they finally ended up catching them. But they were minors. Like, they were just, like, they said it was, like, gang activity, whatever. Um, the week before that, my my papa was a pastor, my mom's dad. And um, it used to kind of, like, freak me out sometimes because he would get prophetic word. Um, and I would, like, I just, like, didn't understand, like, how to lean into it as a kid. Like, growing up, I was always like, oh. Like, don't tell me I don't want to know because I was scared, you know. But <laughs> now I'm like, yeah, yeah, give it to me. I don't want to die. Don't tell me I'm going to yes, die. You thought it, you didn't no. understand what yeah, it was. Yeah, like I just didn't get it. And like, now I want my life to be spontaneous. <laughs> right. I was like, don't tell me. But yeah. he, um, he, uh, he w- had called my mom like three days, four days prior. I was like, is everything all right with Shara down there? Like, is she okay? Like, she's just been on my heart and like. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to pray over her. Like, and so, like, they prayed over me. Like, I didn't really, like, know that at the time or whatever. But I had been praying favor. Lord, favor, favor. Pour your favor out over me. Protection. Favor. Like, two weeks leading up to that. Wow. And I lived here for, like, obviously, like, mm-hmm. a long time before that happened. And um, so that was, like, my first battle. I was like, man, 
all right, mm -hmm. strap up because it's time to go. Because um, that happened. I went through some st struggles with my relationship. Mm -hmm. I was working through some issues at work. Mm -hmm. um, and I just felt like, I mean, it was one thing after another. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it it felt to me like the spiritual world was becoming physical. So now I feel like I'm battling not only. Well, my it became more real it too. Did. You're like, oh, oh, wow, this is. And those Real. physical attacks. This isn't that just I was a receiving. fake thing that I'm reading. Yes. Yeah. The physical attacks started to play into effect with my mental, mm -hmm. and I, because they so say it all correlates. Yes, they mm -hmm. say like if you go through a traumatic event, like it can really, especially if you've been hit in the head, oh, like wow. it can cause that emotional damage as well with it. And so I've never struggled from like anxiety really. I mean, I would be a nervous person, but not like to the point where I was like. I don't want to get up. I don't want to deal with. Yeah. I don't want to the point where you can't leave your home or something. Mm -hmm. Um and. Uh, so that was kind of all of 2021, 2022 rolls around and it's not any better. I'm just like, oh my gosh, like what is happening? Like all of this stuff. And really what I felt like I had done was I had, I had, you know, I was praying so hard to like, you know, God, just like, where's your, your favorite, your favorite, where your are favorite. you? Cause you feel like that's like what you're supposed to do. But I just had to literally stop Indeed. and just let him talk to me. I was talking as per usual, <laughs> I was talking to God and not letting him talk to me. You got to listen. And yeah. Yes. So I felt, <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> I got so, it figured out. God. Right. So I feel like I was dealing with all of these like physical battles. And, and there were going, deep things. They're not, these yeah, weren't like surface no. things. Like, oh, I don't like my job. I mean, that was part of it, but like that wasn't the deep things that you were walking no. through truthfully that nobody could not see. Not at all. And so I felt like I was going through all of this, but I wasn't actually receiving what I was supposed to how like how to handle this and I don't feel like it's been just now so it's like a two-year process mm -hmm. and I just now am figuring out how to get from the battle into the bloom side of it mm -hmm. and it was literally just me quieting my thoughts quieting myself and putting my like literally kneeling before God and being like where, where what, are you how yeah I mean, just, that is so and good. I love that. Shutting up <laughs> and just like, and I will just sit there and just be like, okay, like, I don't know what to pray right now. Yeah. So I've talk talked about me. that a lot. When you're that crushed and broken, like, yes. you don't have things to say. Yes. <laughs> and, and he meets you, like, right yeah. there. He right. shows up. And, like, even just like you're saying, kneeling, that humility of just that. saying, coming before the Lord and just being like, I'm in awe of who you are mm. and what you're able to do. Yes. And, like, like, you're talking about, like, his strength is made perfect in our weakness. It's like you're reminded in 100%. these battles of how weak we actually are. Well, so then when we sit as his, at his feet, you're yes. like, wow. I almost like, had, and I hate to say this, I don't think anyone should have to go through that. I'm not, disclaimer, right, no one should right, be attacked right. in their parking garage, but or go through like any type of relationship or work. And that's not stress. God's heart or plan for no. us. But I almost had to be broken down so much to get to a place where I could be built up into where I felt like he wanted me to be. So you know, when you when you started talking again about your attack, because I remember when you told me, I was like totally crushed. And I still get wild. super emotional about it just because when you sit there and you're in the reality of knowing that life is but a vapor, it doesn't matter how Ooh. strong you are. It doesn't matter how, I mean, because you're a fighter. You are, you're a warrior, you're a fighter, you battle. But the reality is, is that we have like no control over situations. And, you know, and when you were speaking, the Lord brought this scripture at 2 Corinthians 4, 8 through 10. It says, we are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed perplexed but not in despair persecuted but not abandoned struck down but not destroyed we always carry around in the our in our body the death of jesus so that the life of jesus may also be revealed in our body oh, 100%. it literally killed me when 100%. i was reading it i was like lord or when he was showing as he was speaking i was like man like you're living proof of that you can be struck down but not destroyed you can be crushed oh you can be perplexed you can be in despair but you know i think that's what the essence of it is you had to die for god to be 100%. resurrected in you and we don't mm -hmm. realize that when we say yes i say this all the time to jesus that that really means that hey hey there goes your mm -hmm. there goes it for you yeah. because people think you know okay if i choose god my life's going to i'm going to have favor yeah i'm going to mm -hmm. i'm going to be promoted you know exalt me in due time you know he says he gives, he gives grace to the humble and opposes the proud which you know it's wild because i know i used to think that it was a formula which yeah. we talked about a little bit before but truthfully it's learning that lord we have these things that happen he turns these things for, for good. good like yeah. he didn't will oh, yeah. this for you but no, he no, no, th no, no. but there's a purpose in your pain and no, going through it, that sure. yeah he will he will shape and shift and do all kinds of things yeah and i love that because so that good. scripture is so like it's insane well so often we in in our like phase our wilderness seasons mm -hmm. we we ask god because he's powerful all powerful right we're like 
change this circumstance, get us out of yeah. it, you know, because we know that he has the power to do so. But if we lean into God and we just say, no, I'm going to shift my perspective from what I see and from what sucks about all of this. I'm going to focus on you. I'm going to mm-hmm. pursue you. And I'm going to let like lean into the process of what you're going to do through me in this season. Yeah. It's like we can. I feel like we can extend our wilderness seasons by trying to by like we were talking about earlier through bitterness, through all of these things. But if we allow God to really just change our hearts, change what our eyes are looking at, change our perspective, like it not only will make the wilderness season so much um, more pleasant, Mm -hmm. (laughs) um, but or or just open your eyes, like remove the veil for you to see the beauty in the wilderness. It's not that it's pleasant or that it'll feel good, but like it's, you see differently, your perspective, your ability to see is different. And and we all have that choice of what we choose to focus on. And if we allow God to use that to, to I feel like you both like as mothers and business owners and entrepreneurs, like you both understand that, like that feel that you're like, I have you almost like have to be doing something Mm. like I have to be, I I, I need to, I need to make this happen. I need to be the one that does this Mm -hmm. or it's like, no, I can, Mm -hmm. I can make that happen. And it was, I had to like almost like remove that air from myself and just be like, maybe I can't Mm -hmm. God, you can, and you will. And it's not that you can't, it's just not yet. Yeah. You know, which I'm in a season of not yet. I mean, not um, yet, not yet. And I've heard not yet so many times and it's one of the worst things to to feel is not yet. So (laughs) I feel like I'm in a weird space too, where it's like, I did commit the majority of my adult life to a career. I mean, I, you just, I could, I mean, I didn't. And my boyfriend, he did his whole professional career as a bull rider and I had my stuff going on with DCC and then I stayed in it Mm -hmm. and very much like was married to married to the game Mm -hmm. um but that's what I felt like I did and and it I mean it paid off I do feel like I said it it was all a blessing because I learned so much about myself and what I could do and and what I could accomplish um but now I'm in a season where I am in my 30s the majority of my friends are married with kids Mm -hmm. and they have that and so that's another when we go back to identity I struggle with that it's like am I supposed to, like, when will this mm-hmm. happen for me? What am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to be? And so that's another thing where I've really, like, this in the last, like, three or four months, I've really kind of, like, had my eyes open to, like, you know what? It's cool if it does. It's cool if it doesn't. Like, I'm a child of God, whether I'm married, that's whether right. I've got 15 mm-hmm. kids, whether I've got 15 dogs. And, every, <laughs> and everyone's, like, story and, like, timeline just looks different. Well, yeah. I, yeah, and I just heard obey. So I don't know what God's asking you to do or what you're feeling convicted about or what you're feeling not convicted about or what God's pushing you into. Yeah. I heard him say obey that, and then it will come. It says – that's just what I don't know what that means, but I know Me that either. I know I but know I, I you know I know not. that whatever he's calling you to do, or if you're feeling something in your spirit that's not settled, or that it you know he's going obey, and then all things will be added. Well, see, and you know what's funny about that is the minute I decided, like, and really full on made the decision to leave my job. Um, that was when Harlan House came out, mm. and I've got to meet some of the most incredible people and kids through that. Like opportunity. And that's just the beginning. I, I it's just the beginning. And I feel like, like I promise you, like just do this. Like mm-hmm. you'll be great at it. Like they're gonna love you. And like I mean, I struggle. Like no, I wasn't. I didn't grow up like a sh- trained dancer in the studio competition stuff. But I'm like, I love people. I love Girl. kids. He calls the unqualified. You know what? Every he time sh- he'll show up and just you know. Isn't it wild? It is wild. wild. Also, a wildflower. Um, <laughs> like, it, I feel like even like you all are going into your second year of this, mm-hmm. really, and it's like. Even like I was like, I'm like, I walk in, I'm like super impressed. And you guys are like, well, we're just kind of getting it together. And like, we're doing, I'm like, baloney, you guys are like pros. Like, this mm-hmm. is great. And so I, I feel like, like that's a constant, a constant thing that I feel like he is exalting in just like everyday life. And like, that's what I like to put on blast. Like, I mean, speaking of another battle, I struggle with like my social media. Like mm. I've got a pretty large following on Instagram and I feel like I've grown that very organically. Like I'm try, <laughs> I try to just be myself and like show like my, like, idiot side all the time because I feel like people like so much on Instagram especially with DCC yeah they're like she's this person and she does this and they mm-hmm. don't do and I'm like nah like we some of we're us we're real we are real like mm-hmm. we try I like to show that I'm real and that kind of side of things um but that's been somewhere where I, I really wish that I, c- I would do better about almost like ministering to other mm-hmm. people on there just because I feel like sometimes you get to the point where you're like because it can look very not vain, but yeah, 
Like it can't look like mm. I'm doing this just to show. It's because you have that authenticity in you and you're like me. Me and you, like all we care about really is being authentic to I who we are. I want someone to see me for me. For like, me. And, and, it. It, and it's impossible. <laughs> and so I've had to tell myself it's impossible for people to see who you oh, are yeah. and the complexity of who you are on social media. And no. so I've made peace with that because I feel like for I sure. struggle with that too because you're like, but Lord, I want to be like, you know, I want people to... I don't Sometimes care. I'm like, I just want to share this. Like, I thought this was cool for me. To, like, this yeah. hit my heart today. Like, maybe it'll hit somebody else's. It's not just because I'm trying to prove to somebody, like, here's my post. Well, people, people feel that on you. Day. Or at least so. I believe people That's feel I, that on you. So, like, with yeah. my identity, like, I try to, like, refer everything back to that because that was kind of, like, the premise of, like, going through the battle and the blooming. Mm-hmm. I've literally had to go through the mental struggles of, like, don't make it all about you, mm-hmm. but still be fun. Still try to encourage, like, make people laugh. But now you're the ham. Like, don't be a ham. I've, I've struggled with that just because I love social media. Like, she kind of hates social media, but I love creating content. I love yeah. showing up on And there. she's so talented in that. I know, you know? you're really good. But it's, thank you. But, <laughs> I, but it is hard. Like, I think last year I stepped away from YouTube for the year, you know, and I love vlogging. I love yeah. doing stuff like that. But going, God, where is the line? Like, where is the line of, and I, I still haven't figured that out of going, I love this, but like, I don't know how to show up in a way that feels number one, authentic. And I, I really tried to be real and all that kind of stuff, but also going, I'm not trying to like be like famous online, right. but I also know that, that when you do have a platform, you have, uh, just a group of women that you can impact and, and it can be about God, you know? Well, and so the thing I'm always is like, every day I'm like, more of you, less of me. Yeah. Like, show mm-hmm. me how to show up here in a way that exalts you and diminishes me. Yes. Like, I don't want to be a distraction for people. I don't, you know? It's and so you say that. I was thinking, like, <laughs> at my time on the team, too, I would always try to be like, what's best for the team? What's best for the team? When really maybe it was just it just needed to be what's best for maybe one person in the room and so like something that I've tried to remind myself this like in the like since like the new year started was like if you can reach just one person right. just he chases one, after the one person then it was it'll be worth it so mm-hmm. that's why I've been trying to like remind myself like with how I go into my classes and how I go into like if I can just maybe like help or guide one person either closer to the Lord or closer in their walk, you know, mm-hmm. or their confidence with that. Um, I mean, cause it all does, it all does come back to him. So, mm-hmm. um, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to Love like that. this year, just really like redirect, just like, even if it's just one, cause I feel like I'm, maybe it's the seven in me. I, can't, <laughs> I don't know. I've never talked about Enneagrams as much. Um, <laughs> you guys, um, uh, but I think that's in me. Like I look at these big lofty goals. I'm like, yes big things must do this much stuff by mm-hmm. the time. Like my bucket list are always like huge things, but really it's like dwindle it down. Okay. Mm-hmm. Refocus, which I feel like you're good at helping me at. Like just do one thing. You know, Tyler's <laughs> taught, Tyler's taught me a lot. You know, I think it's crazy how God pairs you with people because you know, we are so radically different, but he's taught me so much about, you know, cause I'm a big picture of a visionary and mm-hmm. he's, he's, a visionary, but yet he's practical in like the ways you get to that. Because again, God's saying, Say yes to me in the small things before mm-hmm. you go anywhere That's right. else. You yeah. have to steward what you have in your hand. 100%. And, and when you have nothing, and there's so much about stewardship in the Bible that people don't understand about, and the talents was one thing. It's like when God gives you something, and if it feels like not a lot, but if you can't be trusted to steward that small thing, mm-hmm. you'll never be trusted to steward something bigger. Because, again, it's not about you. It's not about right. me. It's about what God's giving you in this season for people, for his glory, and yeah. be, him being known, not us being known. And you know what's right. funny you say that about talents? I feel like so many people are like, oh, DCC, like you're so talented at this. And it's like, really? What made a difference whenever I got there wasn't, it wasn't like my dance ability. Like it was for sure 100%. It was like, it was the small little things that I had just like really committed to about myself. And like, I mean, even talents like such as like just, I don't know, like I can rap kind of. And so <laughs> like, I forgot about that. <laughs> you like, can, can you give us a rap? I don't know. Like I need like you a think you could do it on the It spot? has to be like a topic maybe. I don't can know. Can I give you a topic yeah, and like, you we rap? Can try. Like you just freestyle? Yes, like I, we can like rap. Like okay, I forgot about do? this. We would play like Drake style beats on our phones, and like you would like come up like we give topics, and then we would like rap about people. It was so funny, but like that one little <laughs> thing. <laughs> I'm dead. Like, what's what's the topic? I don't know. We can put her on the spot. Maybe try some of them. I can't think of it because then I won't. What get about it Battle and Bloom? Battle and Bloom. That's what I was wondering. Can, can you rap about that? Maybe. Uh, going through the battle, going to talk about God, looking up, saying, oh, man, I don't know. No, I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> but, let's see, battle, battle, baby. What about no. passion or, passion? like, 
I don't know. Usually I, I uh, rap better about like going to the grocery store. Oh, Kishira, thank you for being here oh. today. We love you. It's so easy, so, so natural. Fun. I feel like Good. we could talk for hours and hours and hours and hours. I, I really have always felt that about you. And we just pick up right where we left off, like I talked about earlier. But thank you for being here. We love you so love much. You and I'm so you're glad. So like, I'm so glad you're in my life. You're such a bright light. And I don't say, I mean, bright light sounds cliche, but really you are. You're bold. You're bright. And I love that you are our first guest under this bright sign. I love it. It's perfect. It It, it, it really, it's perfect. God, I feel like God, every step of the way, like even that, like you're just saying the light and then the neon light. I mean, mean, it sounds so silly, but it's like, you illuminate this. Like even looking at how you are, that's what, that's what you are in life. And so, and that is not a coincidence. It's not a coincidence. Can I pray? Lord Jesus, I just thank you for this time together, Father. I thank you for Cash. I thank you for Amanda, God. And I thank you for this conversation. We just lift it up to you, Father. And I thank you for all the people that are watching, Lord. I pray that you would just pour your spirit out on us, shift our hearts, Lord. Allow us to see us in who, you, in the way that you see us, God, through your eyes, Father. I pray this special blessing over her, God. I pray that you would heal her body, heal her mind, heal her heart, Lord. And we just thank you for this time. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Woo-hoo!